Hello, this is Jer. I'm playing Oxygen Not Included. This is my Moonlight playthrough of this game in the DLC. And I, in the last episode, constructed two steam turbines. So uh, that is great, except for the fact that uh, they're flooded, which means I'll never get them to uh, operate. So I'm going to drain the water out of here. In particular, I'm just going to sweep when, uh, when this water gets low enough, the center of the uh, steam turbines. That will be enough for uh, this to become unflooded, and then the water that's on the sides can be left. So I'm having an alternate way of getting up to this uh, area above the steam turbines, because I destroyed the ladder that was there in the last episode. So now that I've got plastic to be able to build my two steam turbines, I no longer need to construct plastic out in the open world where it's releasing a lot of heat into my base. So I'm going to disable this one, actually destroy in fact, and I'm going to direct all the uh, that petroleum inside the liquid reservoir that's sitting underneath the steam turbines. That is going to be for the purposes of uh, cooling down the water that goes, or the uh, petroleum rather, that is going to go in and out of the metal refinery. The main ingredient that needs to be underneath the steam turbines is water. Because as that hot machinery runs and that uh, hot petroleum goes around that pipe, it's going to interact with water. That will turn to steam. And it's steam that steam turbines need to ingest or inhale or whatever you want to say into the, into the system. And then they convert that to water, much uh, cooler temperature. Well, 95 degrees from wherever the high, hotter steam temperature was. And also in the process, it produces a little bit of uh, electricity, um, 850 potentially, depending on how much uh, pressure and temperature you get. I've noticed that the oxygen level is uh, pretty low on the bottom of the base, mostly because there's a buildup of carbon dioxide and other things. So what I wanna do is I wanna start to pump oxygen in this area, which is ultimately gonna push the carbon dioxide and other gases down into the pump that I've got uh, pumping into uh, and out of the base. Back over to the desolence, lens, I'm going to have the solar panels raised and I have an excess amount of glass inside the, the uh, rocket that was here so I can't build anymore without destroying them but what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise these because I want to build a steam turbine over here that's going to do some cooling, in particular cooling the uh, hot oil well. Building a liquid vent above the steam turbines because I want to add more liquid. Don't want to flood it, but I want to have, let's say, about 75 kilograms of uh, liquid just to act as cooling to make sure the temperature stays well below the 100 uh, degrees where it would overheat. So I'm having my cold block, or what will be a cold block in the future, be raised. So that's going to be four tiles high, and I've got two conveyor lines there. One is going to be for ingredients, and the other is for cooked food. So the uh, carbon dioxide level is pretty bad in my industrial zone. I also have natural gas, a little bit of chlorine. So I'm just gonna have my dupes use the Atmo suits when they go into that zone for the time being until I can shut, uh, shut some of those machines off. So on this base, continuing to have my solar panels be uh, bumped up and notice I've got a shortage of copper. So I'm just gonna go and hunt for little extra pieces of copper that might be laying around my base. Recently added a system that is going to filter out the natural gas because I didn't have natural gas there before so that uh, that looks like it's running correctly but I've got an excessive amount of carbon dioxide so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the carbon dioxide to go towards the rockets in priority order and any excess amount will just be leaked out in space. So as I was uh, doing this, I realized one of the tiles got destroyed that is opening my base up to uh, space and currently just wasting the hydrogen that's going out, but that'll eventually turn into oxygen if I don't plug this up soon, so I'm going to do that. Also restocking some of the Atmo suits there and got the vent finally that's going to send the, carbon, the excess carbon dioxide out of my base. So now I'm happy with the amount of water I have sitting on top of the steam turbines. That's going to act as the cooling. So I can now destroy the liquid reservoir that's uh, sitting there. Also get rid of some of this uh, other excess pipes that were that was uh, delivering petroleum in the old polypress. So made a mistake here. I uh, I assume my dupes would destroy that liquid vent quick enough so that the, such as this wouldn't flood. I really should have just turned off that shutoff. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy this uh, steam turbines, let this vent out or drop out the, the water and try again. So here is the petroleum line going around the uh, hot steam or future hot steam uh, area and in and out of the metal refinery. With that petroleum going around, I can now seal off this area and start to uh, deliver water inside this space that's ultimately going to go to steam. So this liquid reservoir is uh, it currently contains ethanol and I'm going to actually cool it down to about minus 40 or 50 degrees. So that's going to freeze any liquid here. So I'm just having this liquid uh, be dropped down so it can sit under a vacuum area instead. All right, just moving the final solar panel over and connect that with some metal or some uh, heavy watt wires. And I'm gonna destroy some of the heavy watt wires. I won't be able to access it all until I build some ladders over there, but uh, that's for a later time. I'm gonna go to this rocket here and I'm gonna refactor it a bit. So I'm gonna do a liquid shut off, ultimately gonna put water back in there and gonna disable the output because I'm gonna send this water back to the decimal ends and uh, might as well bring some water with me. I'm also gonna refactor this pipe such that I don't need to vent out the, the top left area because it already is a vacuum. It'll mean, be maintained as such. And I can uh, connect this as what I had before, which was a system to deliver a little bit of extra oxygen as the dupe is traveling and push that into the rocket as it's needed destroying some liquid reservoirs that are containing water or polluted water that's going to emit more polluted oxygen in this area also selecting a few pips for uh, food purposes so this is still a manual process that i'm uh, going through every now and then the pip one in particular is almost every single day in this destroying of the liquid reservoirs that uh, that doesn't happen nearly as often i'm installing the final line of granite tiles that's going to be the uh, cooling system for food before this rocket gets sent back i want to destroy this pipe for the purpose of a fact of i don't want the, the oil that's going to be in that pipe to mix in with liquid reservoirs that currently contain water i want to make sure that rocket has a chance to drain the water out first i'm now uh, starting the process of putting more water on top of the steam turbines I'm going to carefully monitor this till it gets about 75 kilograms and then I'm going to hit the uh, shut off button which is what I should have done last time. At the same time a little bit of water is going under the uh, steam turbines. I actually have to get back in here because I want to put in, I'm going to make this out of steel, a uh, thermo sensor. I may not need this but it's a lot easier to build it now than to do it later on if, uh, if I do choose uh, to have a system that, that measures the temperature of that. Taking a risky move here. I'm getting up to about 75 kilograms and uh, I'm gonna get my dupe destroy liquid vent. If they didn't destroy, they didn't have someone in the area, I was gonna hit the shop button. But anyway, there we are. Uh, two steam turbines that have water sitting under them and I don't have them flooded. So I'm digging out a spot underneath this liquid uh, reservoir for the extra liquid to fall down to. And I've got to be careful because I don't want this carbon dioxide and other gases to go into my vacuum area. So making a tile around ice or anything else that I think will uh, melt away and let out that gas in the future. Every now and then I've got to check on the pips and see if any of their uh, stables are less than three and uh, wrangle the few that I need. Destroying this tile so that the carbon dioxide will fall out because I'm digging out this spot for a great hall, a new great hall. I'm going to relocate it. I'm also going to have a kitchen that's going to be located underneath it. So I want to get rid of this salt water and I know I've uh, protected that beta hive from water falling so I'm going to have that fall down. And that's just going to fall over there on the left area allowing me to be able to uh, build in the spot. I've got more water than will actually fit down here so it's still touching that liquid reservoir it's going to be getting uh, really cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a pump and put in another liquid reservoir actually in the liquid and have this mixture of salt water and water be uh, pumped in that. I'm starting the infrastructure underneath these solar panels to put in steam turbine that's ultimately going to deliver cooling to this space. It's also going to act as a hydro battery of sorts and I'll explain that later once it gets running. 
Here I'm digging out two new floors. The top floor is going to be the new Great Hall, and the bottom one will contain the kitchen on the far right. The whole idea here is to be able to give access to the deep freeze system that's going to be on the far right in vacuum area, uh, containing food and ingredients that can be kept forever. <laughs> so when my, when my dupes get trapped there, great job. So up to this point, I've just been taking critters and uh, converting them to meat as I need it. And it's getting a bit annoying. I much prefer to have this deep freeze system in place such that uh, I can just produce all the food and know it'll be kept forever. And I might as well store it right next to the eating area. And the ingredients, I might as well store that next to the kitchen. So that's the logic of uh, putting it there. And I already have that cold block set up underneath so it's, it, uh, it won't have to transport ingredients and food too far. I want to transport three wheezy warts to the Deso lands. That is uh, for a future project. So I'm going to send an engineer over there and get them to dig out three wheezy warts and ensure that gets put into the conveyor loader. So it gets sent back to my home world, which I can eventually fly on a rocket to the Deso lands. So I'm going to also put in a couple pips on this rocket that goes to the Deso lands. I think you can, you can now guess what I'm going to plan to do once I arrive there with a pip and some uh, seeds. I am now happy with the amount of water that's under the steam turbines. That is eventually going to heat up with this uh, different mechanisms that are there. So I'm destroying the system that's controlling the water going into that. And from this point on, I will uh, not need any new water, uh, but I will need to keep the liquid that's sitting on top of the steam turbines cool. And I don't have a base system for cooling yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually extend the, uh, the length of uh, the steam turbines uh, by one tile to the left. So that water will be able to get over there. I'm gonna then take the temperature of that water and if that temperature gets too hot, let's say above 33 degrees, I'm going to start sending in the cold ethanol to cool it off. And the moment it gets uh, colder than 33 degrees, the ethanol will stop going there. So the ethanol is going to be sort of an optional route on the way back down to liquid reservoir from the, the uh, ethanol's perspective. And then only when cooling is needed, Will that ethanol go uh, in? Because I don't want it to run all the time, because if that were to happen, it would actually freeze the water into ice, and I wouldn't have any heat transfer between the uh, water that wouldn't be there and the steam turbines. Now, connecting up the pipelines to make a full circuit for the ethanol, I'm going to set the setting there to be minus 50. So the idea is when ethanol returns back to the liquid reservoir, it's going to go through the aqua tuner if it isn't uh, below minus 50 degrees. So this stuff is going to get really cold, which is excellent. I couldn't do this with water because obviously it would uh, freeze in the pipes and break, but ethanol is a good choice because it can take the really cold temperatures. So I just need to complete a loop all the way around so it's going to go in here and the system or the line that uh, provides the new ethanol that, uh, that can be destroyed because I'll be able to rely on the ethanol that I've got from this point on. Also now having a carbon dioxide line go out. This is going to be from the polypress, which I won't be able to operate until that thing, uh, that area converts uh, to steam because it's currently uh, flooded. Just watching engineer dig out the last wheezy warts, send it into the uh, conveyor loader, and then teleport back to the home world. Telling my dupes to put the wheezy warts that's now in the uh, home world into this bin inside the rocket. Also going to put at a really high priority, get uh, pips to be delivered to this location. Now I just need to uh, wrangle a few pips to get those uh, in the rocket. I'm adding a bin for the inputs to the metal refinery along with the sweeper, just to add a little bit of automation to this uh, metal refinery system. So this liquid reservoir is filled up and I still have liquid sitting on top of uh, the other liquid reservoir that's filled with ethanol. So I'm going to destroy it and build it again and get it to, to fill up a second time. Okay, time to start creating some more steel. Oxygen level in the uh, industrial zone has returned, so I'm going to actually change this order such that, uh, I'm going to have to take engineers Atmos suit off, but I'm going to change it such that they don't have to go through the Atmos stations in order to get to industrial stations again. 
So on the far right of the great hall in the kitchen is going to be a vacuum area and that shaft area going up is uh, has not become a vacuum just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build some tiles here and build it up in such a way that this becomes a vacuum from the bottom uh, up. And this will allow me to be able to store really cold things without cooling them off my entire base. As I dig up, I'm going to have to destroy tiles and dig out the rest of the uh, tiles there. So that is ultimately going to build a vacuum or continue the vacuum uh, actually as I go up. I'm going to build the ladder on the right side because I'm going to build tiles on the left spot where I'm building currently vacuums. That's where food is going to be stored later on. Just checking the temperature of this ethanol that is cooling down. It is getting to about five degrees. So cool, not enough for a deep freezing of food, but it will get there. So just continuing to dig out this spot and I'm going to choose two spots to store the food. And that's going to be level with the uh, rooms on the left side. One for storing food that's going to be next to the great hall and the other for storing ingredients that's going to be next to the kitchen. My dupe in the desol ends, they're going to dig out a spot over here to get the pip to plant three wheezy warts. That's going to generate a bit of radiation to use. So what I want to do is deliver some liquid on in this in between this wall so it can allow my dupes to actually pick up things that are on the other side so on the uh, right side in the vacuum area that's where the frozen food's going to be on the left side this is a living area this is where my dupes will be able to grab this stuff so just planning this out but I want to do it in such a way that I don't break the vacuum on the right I'm going to research high velocity transport and this is what I plan to put in the decimal lens so that I can actually transport oil via this mechanism rather than rockets in the future. In order to complete that research, I'm going to need some data banks. So I could either build a rocket to go up and produce those, but I still have some geysers that haven't been analyzed. So before I build a rocket that's going to actually allow me to build data banks, I might as well analyze uh, two of the geysers that have access here, but I'm going to build some Atmo suits for them to be able to uh, do this because they're they're in places that I don't want to send a dupe in by my themselves without uh, protection such as the hot salt water guys are over here okay pipes are breaking over here this is the old system for the uh, metal the old metal refinery so I might as well just destroy this my dupe in the desolens lens is looking for something to do so I'm just gonna get them to go after some iron ore digging a path for scientists to be able to get down to this salt water geyser so that they can analyze it they can also analyze the cold carbon dioxide geyser that I've got, but I want to dig out a pass such that that carbon dioxide doesn't leak into the base, so I can use water to do that. So now I'm just building out the spot with the wheezy warts. So I'm going to have a actually a dip down area. So I'm going to have two wheezy warts on left or right and one further down. I'm going to have the red bolt generator in between. Also need a drop off spot for the pips and a bin to put in the wheezy wart seeds. Here I'm delivering another Atmo suit and starting the path to go down underneath the water so I can get into that carbon dioxide geyser without leaking carbon dioxide in my base. Before sending this rocket back, I want to make sure that I've got some steel because I have a few things I need to make with steel in the diesel ends. Okay, I decided to do this a bit differently. First of all, I built the wrong tiles there. There should be airflow tiles. That needs to be a vacuum because that, the tile that's on the right side of it is going to be extremely cold and I don't want that uh, extremely coldness to be leaking into the rest of my base. So I'm going to build a temporary wall on the left side and I'm going to put the bottle uh, emptier on the right side instead and this is where I'm going to drop off some liquid. I'm also going to choose uh, petroleum for that liquid. I was going to put salt water but there is a risk it could freeze it shouldn't because it's around a vacuum area, but uh, in this game, things can happen the way, in ways that you don't expect. So it's a bit safer in my mind to use petroleum. That uh, takes a lot to, more to, to freeze it. So what I'm doing to get that is just throwing a pipe that's going to fall on the ground. They can mop it up and they can put it into a bottle emptier for me. Scientist has finished the analysis on the saltwater geysers, so the data bank can then be taken up by this dupe into my virtual planetarium. With the new bit of steel over three tons worth, along with the pips and three wheezy warts, I can now send this rocket back to the desolens so I can do some more interesting things over there. 
All right, so with this bottle emptier, I'm going to set that in a second to uh, dump some petroleum in that location. But I want to have those uh, just tiles destroyed first because that's where the petroleum has to fall. And one note on the airflow tiles. If liquid gets on the airflow tile, you won't see it unless there's a tile to the left, right, or top. So it is possible anytime you see an airflow tile that there's actually liquid there there you can see uh, you only can see the petroleum because there's a tile on the left and right so what i'm going to do instead of having a second bottle empty i'm just going to have that drop off you only need a very little bit of uh, liquid so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to destroy this mop up the excess on the side so i've got a just a small real okay so right this moment you can see that airflow tile it actually has liquid on it even though it visually visually you can't see it so don't worry if you don't uh, see it. So I'm just going to build around it. And I'm going to actually build some copper tiles on the left and aluminum on the right. The copper on the left is just for decoration, not really that important. But the aluminum on the right is more important because I want to keep that really cold because food is going to be sitting there and the food will interact with this cold aluminum tile. Aluminum, aluminum has, is a good uh, thermal transfer. So the ethanol that runs through it will uh, be able to cool off and keep it cool very well okay so now I've got a wall that my dupes can actually reach through and uh, keep a vacuum on the right side so this is excellent now all I need is the rest of the infrastructure so I'm gonna have two conveyor chutes that are gonna drop off ingredients and cooked food so I'll have uh, each of those are gonna have the separate line that's gonna go through this cold block so the idea is the ingredients that come into the system currently that's meat so I'm going to connect this to the meat line and that meat will instead of being dropped off in the old kitchen will go through the cold block so actually I'll select a few critters there to be converted to meat so that'll go through the cold block before being dropped off next to the kitchen new kitchen and uh, that way it'll be cold it'll be in a vacuum area and it'll last forever until cook finally grabs it or, or um, I think my Dupe's name is a chef in this one. But anyway, uh, they will uh, be able to do, take their time, cook it. And when they do cook it, I've got another conveyor loader that will pick up the barbecue meat and send it back through the cold block, dropping off this time on the top next to the great hall where my dupes will be able to eat it. Over on the decile ends, the rocket has arrived. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the switch on for water to be able to uh, empty back into that uh, planetoid so that ultimately that can reach the oil well as well as uh, the washroom and produce oxygen. So I'm going to have to connect that to pipe in order to make that happen. In addition to that, I'm also going to want to drop off pips at this location and drop off the wheezy warts in this bin. And make sure this area gets sealed off before I do that, otherwise the pips will just run free. So the, I also need to give one of the dupes the ability to actually have crit ranching because they have to go inside the rocket and uh, get that uh, get the pips delivered, wrangled, and then have one of the pips, or one of the dupes rather, um, deliver it there. So also destroying some plants or digging up some plants because I want the wheezy warts in that location. And I only allowed my pips to actually put it in one of those three locations, but they won't do that if there's too many other wild plants around the area. So we'll get it there. Explorer is going to have the critter ran wrangling, wrangle those three pips and have them sent over there. Here I'm building a transformer with smart battery systems. So this is going to feed a wire into my kitchen area so that I don't have to have heavy watt wires in that location. Also going to build a door on the far right to stop the future great hall from uh, going into the rest of the uh, area, which which wouldn't work so so there we are in addition to having this cold block where a food is going to run through it i also want to have the ethanol run through the aluminum tiles that way if i ever had food or ingredients that didn't quite get cold enough as it went through there it, when it sits on the aluminum tile as a last resort it will actually freeze just by sitting on that thing and that'll get to about temperatures of almost about minus 50. Here I'm just watching the dupes put the last pieces on that ethanol system and seeing the ethanol go through those two different aluminum tiles and that will eventually bring that temperature down to the minus 50 as I mentioned. So some carbon dioxide has gotten inside that vacuum area so I'm going to research a small air pump to be able to fix it. 
of course, this means I'm going to have to turn on the Radbolt system in order to uh, complete this research. Because of the nature of how pips work, you've got to plant from left to right. If you want three plants, wild plants, to be side by side in this type of uh, orientation. So that didn't happen here. And I could have used uh, ladders to, well, that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to dig out this one that's on the left. I'm going to put a ladder there just as a temporary marker to tell the pep not to plant there and it doesn't actually have to be constructed even just you know having it uh, under construction the pip won't actually plant there so they are kind of nice critters in that way but this is just going to make it so that it'll go from left to right so the cool block for the uh, deep freeze system is really cool the extra infrastructure around it is turned on so i'm going to actually relocate my kitchen down here so any future barbecue cooking is going to happen down there the meat is going to be delivered and go through that. So let's uh, let's convert a couple of these pips to meat and watch as that goes through this system. So that uh, dupes will go in there. They will get uh, the meat out. I'm just going to even wrangle one of the hatches to go into there. But anyway, the, we're watching the meat. This is the ingredient. It, uh, it's going to go through. As it gets to this point, it's gone down to negative temperatures. It's minus 37, which is excessive. I only need minus 20 or so but the fact that it gets down to that is just fantastic and what that means it's in a sterile sterile environment currently carbon dioxide it will become a vacuum which is also sterile and because it's frozen it'll last forever it'll just sit there and because it's not actually stored in a bin refrigerator i can actually store an infinite amount of it i could keep cooking it like crazy and it'll just pile up and up so now i'm just putting some automated lights for a chef to be able to continue to uh, cook like crazy from this point on. So no longer do I have to select a set of critters every day. I could actually get them all converted to meat and have it go through the system so that both the ingredients and the output barbecue are frozen and will last, sit there and last forever. I just have to make sure I've got those pumps to actually make this a, a new vacuum on the right side because there's a little bit of carbon dioxide there. All right, pump miniaturefication research is done. So I'm gonna turn off Red Bolt Generator, stop wasting power. And the nice thing about this, and the reason that I put, or I waited to have this uh, research, is because although these machines are not efficient when you compare it to the big pump, if you need a lot of them and only need them to take out a little bit of air, in this case, that you know that's the situation, it's only a little bit of carbon dioxide, that's, that's uh, here, it's a lot better to produce a bunch of these small ones that don't need a lot of power than a bunch of large ones that are gonna consume a lot of power as, uh, as you operate this. So that's why I waited for this research to be uh, completed so that I can get this. And this shouldn't take too long, as long as you space them out such that there's only maybe a maximum, say 10-ish tiles between them that uh, it won't take too long to reestablish a new vacuum. The pips are cooperating. They've planted the second Wheezy warp from left to right, so now I can destroy the ladder on the far left and get them to plant the third one. All right, that didn't take too long, so now I've gotten three Wheezy warts. Might as well destroy the doors on the side, but this means that the pips can go wild in my base. And I've got a sportured plant, and I do not want to have them plant that. So I'm going to put it in secure location somewhere, it's, uh, just over there, behind a door. I'm going to put the, the seed, looking for that orchard seed. I'm going to put that uh, very high priority at that location to make sure the pips do not have access to it. So now my dupes can concentrate on a system that's going to deliver some cooling in this world. And I realize I don't have access to the ceramic. That's because this door over here is uh, shut. So I'm going to open that, giving my uh, dupes access to the steel, ceramic, and other materials that I brought along with me. So I'm going to start off by building some insulated ceramic tiles on top. That's where the steam turbine is going to sit. And two on the bottom, that is where the aqua tuner will sit. And I will have uh, pipes go in and out of this area. That's eventually going to be really hot steam. The top one is going to be a drop-off point for the steam turbine. And the bottom one is for the aqua tuner. All right, just decided to have the pipe go directly down from the uh, steam turbine and then go around the side. So sealing this area off on the right, I'm going to build the aqua tuner, making that out of steel. 
and I'm not going to bother with conductive wires here, heavy watt conductive wires, just regular heavy watt wires will be fine. Unlike the home world, I don't expect to ever need more than 20,000 kilowatts to, uh, to be operating. Also putting a temperature gauge out of there and just making that out of steel and steel wires. That's going to be important. Unlike the other one where I may not use it in the home world, this one I definitely will. Also putting in a smart battery. Don't do that. I'll explain that in the next episode. So now I'm ready to put the steam turbine above this system and I realize I forgot to bring some plastic back with me from the home world. That's annoying. I could have easily just put the 200 kilograms I need it for the steam turbine, but oh well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a poly press. I'll need an oil refinery as well, selecting a location that's not super hot and not also too close to my base. So I'm gonna do that over here. I've got plenty of oil to work with, so that is a good thing. And as I mentioned, I just need 200 kilograms. So once I have enough for that, I'll turn this off. So it's a temporary system. Just to avoid me from having to fly back, just to get a pathetic amount of plastic and bring it back. Also, heavy carbon dioxide line coming out of the polypress. I might as well put that in the inside of my rocket. So now I've got to have a pipeline that goes from the oil to, uh, or the oil line that goes right into that oil refinery power as well. So what I'm going to do is have that uh, delivered and knowingly I've got two pipes in the way, but they're not active and they won't be active until I get plastic anyways. So I might as well temporarily destroy them and just send the oil through. I'm going to put a liquid reservoir just to make it so that the operator doesn't have to go and uh, return all the time from the oil refinery. So a vacuum area has been re-established or almost re-established on uh, th this area for the deep freezing. So what I'm gonna do at this point is those, uh, those tiles that have uh, th their airflow tiles, they actually also have carbon dioxide in it. And what's gonna happen over time, it will slowly leak really cold uh, minus 50 aluminum on the right side to the copper on the left through a little bit of carbon dioxide and I don't want that to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy underneath the two of them so I don't want to destroy the tile itself because uh, that will remove the petroleum and I'm going to let those pumps get out all the carbon dioxide reestablish a full vacuum and then I'll reconstruct them just power in a new pump at the very top just to speed up things up a little bit all the steel that I produce in this world is now in the rocket and the other asteroids, so I'm going to produce some more for future projects. Okay, so just watching this whole system go in there, I'm just going to put tiles underneath. It'll just, uh, not, not really critical, but it's going to allow me to make a flat wall on the left side. I'm going to open this door, no point in having my dupes open that every time they want to go through to get uh, some food to eat. Okay, so I gotta rebuild that uh, liquid, or that liquid, that uh, conveyor loader, because that is where barbecue meat is gonna be pushed into and uh, sent to the cooling to be stored forever, or until one of my dupes, uh, of course, eat it. Okay, so this has just uh, been built, so I'm gonna go to the edible and uh, select barbecue. Make sure not to select meat, because I don't want it to pick up uh, meat and uh, take that away from the electric grill. So whenever a chef creates the barbecue meat that will go through this really cold block at the bottom and sit on a really cold tile, aluminum tile on the right. And it'll be in such a way that I can store as much as I want and my dupes have access to it right next to a future gray hall. Okay, time to take a moment to celebrate because I now have a deep freeze system in my base, which means I can store all the food that I can generate forever, at least until one of these dupes consume it. So that's a big deal. The other really nice thing is I can take away most of the heat that comes from the metal refinery. So that's no longer going to be heating up my entire base every time I want to generate some steel or other refined metals. I also have a poly press that can produce some plastic in a way that it's not going to release heat in my base, but I'm not, I don't have that operational just yet. I have a ton of other projects that I still need to do. And if you want to see those, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in another video. Till then.